It is both a privilege and a challenge to introduce Mary McAleese on the occasion of the award of the UCD Ulysses Medal. How can I summarise the achievements of a woman who has been a two-term President of Ireland, Pro-Vice-Chancellor of Queen's University Belfast, the first woman and the second Catholic to hold that office, an impressive current affairs reporter on RTE, the Reed Professor in Trinity College Dublin, and a passionate and articulate commentator on a wide range of social and political issues. Education struck me as an appropriate starting point. Mary Patricia Lenehan, born in North Belfast, was the first member of her family to graduate from university. Her years as a law student in Queens, 1969-73, coincided with some of the worst violence of the Northern Ireland Troubles. But a law degree enabled her to leave Belfast for Trinity College Dublin and to take control over her life. Her career has been marked by periods working in higher education, interspersed with her roles in the media and as President of Ireland. But it's noticeable that when she finished her two terms as President, she again returned to higher education as a doctoral student in canon law at Rome's Gorin University, where she zips around the city on a motorino, uh, as professor in Boston College, and as chair of an EU high-level review group on the modernization of higher education. When Mary McAleese addressed UCD's Ellen H. Society in February 2000, she told them that the great gift that education conveys is personal empowerment the confidence and capacity to choose your own pathway through life. Not a route preordained by family, not a route preordained by society, fam family or circumstances. To choose also how to use those talents and abilities which education has honed, whether to use them for purely personal advancement or to take a wider and more generous view of how they might be applied. This can be read as a summary of her life. Education, especially her training as a lawyer, plus the debating skills that she acquired as a student in St. Dominic's Secondary School, have given her the knowledge, the intellectual capacity, and the confidence to speak, write, and act upon many of the key issues in Irish society over the past 40 years. She has never been afraid to adopt an unpopular, unfashionable position, and she's continued to confound those who have sought to categorize her. A committed and remarkably well-informed Catholic, she was a member of the Irish Catholic Hierarchy's delegation to the New Ireland Forum, and she numbers many priests and bishops among her close friends. Yet she has supported the campaign for women priests. She has been rightly critical, highly critical of the Catholic Church's handling of child sex abuse. And shortly after becoming president, she was reprimanded for taking communion under the Anglican Rite a public gesture that reflects her long involvement in ecumenical gatherings. She was co-founder with David Norris of the Campaign for Homosexual Reform. As President of Ireland, she addressed the LGBT Diversity National Conference, uh, and she has challenged the Single European Act in the European Court of Justice. She has a long record of involvement in penal reform and prisoners' rights, campaigning for Irish prisoners overseas, including the Birmingham Six and the Guildford Four, and she's a strong advocate for the rights of the disabled. Her PhD thesis, which is near completion, addresses the treatment of children in canon law, and we can all agree that this is a very vital topic today. Children featured prominently during her presidency. Visits to every national school close to Oris and Nukthron, which brought her into contact with many children from deprived communities and new immigrant families. And so many of her speeches refer to the opportunities that education can convey, and the need to open up opportunities for marginalised groups so that they can be, and that's in her words, released from the prison of underachievement. As President of Ireland, her motto was building bridges. The calendar of events in the Irish included international garden parties for representatives of new immigrant communities, a 12th of July celebration for those belonging to the unionist tradition, a reception for the survivors of institutionalised child abuse, and one for the people of Oma who underwent such a horrendous bombing. She continued and expanded on her predecessor Mary Robinson's engagement with the global Irish community. Indeed, she made a major speech on this topic in UCD. But her most significant bridge building related to the Northern Ireland peace process and Ireland's relationship with Britain. 
Mary and Martin McAleese were born in Belfast and their lives have continued to straddle the two parts of Ireland, giving them unique insights and contacts north and south in both nationalist and unionist communities. The precise role that they, and I deliberately include Martin at this stage, played in the peace process will only become known at a later date. However, in the mid-1990s, before she became president, Mary McAleese worked with the late Father Alex Reed of Clonard Monastery to re-establish the IRA ceasefire following the 1996 Canary Wharf bombing. While in the Oris, Martin was a very effective conduit between the Protestant paramilitary organisations and the Irish government. Her term as president included the 1998 Good Friday Agreement and the successful establishment of the Northern Ireland Assembly with a power-sharing executive. But her most significant and historic public engagements were undoubtedly with Queen Elizabeth II. On 11th of November 1998, the first anniversary of her inauguration as president, they jointly opened the Irish Peace Tower at Messine, which commemorates all the Irish soldiers who died in the Great War. And in, 19, and in 2011, she memorably welcomed Queen Elizabeth to our Nook throne and accompanied her to the Garden of Remembrance and to the Great War Memorial at Island Bridge. Before she became president, Mary McAleese remarked that the emotional reach of the presidency is much, much greater than its constitutional reach. And these were words that the late Seamus Heaney, who was also honored with the USA's medal, singled out in the introduction to a book of her speeches. Through the events that she hosted as president and her carefully worded speeches, she expanded the reach of the presidency into all aspects of Irish life and far beyond. Anybody who has been privileged to see her in a public gathering cannot fail to be conscious of her genuine interest in people, regardless of their circumstances, their origins or their public importance. At her first inauguration as president of Ireland in November 2011, she quoted a poem by Christopher Logue. I will just give you the last four lines. Come to the edge, and they came, and he pushed, and they flew. We do not know where Mary McAleese's next flight will take her, but we will watch with interest and awe. Pre honorabilis praises totque universitas. Presenta vobis hank meam filium, quam scio tam moribus quam doctrina habilum et edoneum esse que recibiatur insigne judices. It quid tibi fide me testor expondeo totique academia. Ego autoritate mihi concesse presento te ad insigna Ulysses. <laughs> 